Well, one of the things we have learned is how seriously you all take a lot of stuff and how much you want to be engaged and involved and how quickly things can spin out of hand when people get bad information and react to it or when something happens to which a reaction is needed and people don't know what to do. And so that's been a, a big part of it. I know my title of the talk was Emerging Policies, and hopefully we'll get to talk about some of those more specifically when we're outside in the panel or the question and answer, or just come over and see us over at the booth. I'll be over there all afternoon. But we've had issues with public policy, with the wind energy permits, and right now the American Bird Conservancy is taking the initiative on that, and the Wildlife Center is supporting them in the effort to modify the Eagle Take permits. A lot of people just went ballistic over the permit issued to the Northern Arapaho tribe to take two eagles for religious purposes. Now we've got to keep some things in mind. As Brian mentioned last night in a fabulous presentation, we've got eagles everywhere. We've got more eagles in this country now than we've ever had in the last 300 years in all probability. They're not endangered anymore. That doesn't mean we love them any less. But it means we need to keep things in a little bit more of a perspective. It's not so easy to do management planning around individual eagles and individual nests like it was when they were an endangered species. In 1970, when we had fewer than 30 nests here in Virginia, we knew where every one of them was and we managed around each and every one of those nests individually. Well, now we've got more than 1,000 nests in Virginia and they move them every year. The management rules have changed, and so has our need to be flexible and understanding. With the Native Americans, we stole their land, we pushed them out of the regions in which they'd lived for thousands of years, we put them on reservations, and then we promised them, you can continue to practice your religion, for which eagles are a critical part. We revere that. We, we all think that their sacred designation of the eagle is so special, but when we move a tribe to a place where there are no eagles, then we want to get mad when they say, wait, we need eagles for our religious purposes. And I'm not saying what's right or wrong. I'm not going to get into that right now because I have something else to do, but I just want you to keep in mind that this is a dynamic situation in which we must maintain a dialogue. We must keep learning. We must keep adapting. We must remain engaged. And we can't believe one-liners that are tossed out by people who have agendas other than what's best for the eagle. We are going to see a lot more issues with eagle safety and eagle management come forward. They're all special. But maybe some are more special than others. What do you think? Time out. We've got a couple of minutes left. Don't go away. For those of you who don't know, my lovely assistant, I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> is Darcy Huntress, who um, Darcy is a member of our outreach team, and unfortunately, she's leaving us. She's so inconvenient, she's getting married. I mean, what's that all about? So anyway, Darcy has uh, made possible a special appearance here today because she has worked diligently and has the scars to prove it with a special eagle. So hang on. Oh, and before we bring him out, I will let you know, oh, in case is anybody's, if anybody really doesn't know what's in the box, <laughs> you're about to be here for Buddy's debut public appearance. But the bottom line is that he's likely to do some jumping and some flapping, and uh, if he dives off my arm ten times, don't worry, that's okay, that's normal evil stuff. And he's not being hurt, and he's not freaked out, and so I don't want thousand hate letters saying, poor buddy didn't want to be there. Of course he doesn't want to be here. <laughs> Guess what? I'd rather be in bed right now eating French toast and watching Saturday morning fishing shows. No. <laughs> but the bottom line is, he is working for a living, 
and now is the time when he's going to get a chance to be seen for a living. So let's see how we work here. All right, before I do anything, I want to let you know we do tie the leash to our belts. So if he does fly out, only the people on the front row need to worry. <laughs> <laughs> All presents, uh, sending us advice on how to take care of him, building him a new home, coming to visit him, and making him the handful that he currently is. There we go. And see, all of that is normal. This is his first real public appearance. You're there. Now, that's not to say we haven't had him on the glove and walked him around or, or taken him into a room full of people. But this is it. This is the premiere. Flashes don't bother him at all. That's fine. You see, he's quite a handsome guy. Now, what makes Buddy special is not that he's a four-year-old eagle. It's not that he sits on a glove. It's not that he'll take a little morsel of food from somebody's hand. <laughs> oh, here we go. Now, part of what I should be doing is fundraising for my chiropractor. <laughs> but I will see him on Monday morning. I'm quite certain if we do enough of this wrestling. But uh, when I went the other day, he says, what's wrong with you? He says, you used to come in with back injuries from split wood and all in logs, he said, now you've got injuries consistent with sitting at a computer all the time. <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> Buddy is a gateway animal. He is an ambassador in the truest sense of the word. He is the bird who led us to the Eagle Nation. He is the bird who started this relationship. He is the bird who inspired the love that all of you have for this individual, for this nest, for this species, and increasingly for all wildlife. Over the last year, we have been exposing all of our web viewers to different types of wildlife. We're not in the same business that Reese and uh, Brian Watts and the folks here at the Garden are in, at least in how it manifests itself. Reese is our go-to guy, and Brian is a go-to guy on Eagles in the Wild. Uh, Dr. Mitchell Bird, one of my dearest friends for many, many years. I've learned so much about Eagles from him, and now I learned so much this weekend from them. What we do is learn about the individual birds through clinical care, through the environmental research we do as a result of their health problems. We're working on issues like lead poisoning. We're doing studies on the effect of anesthetics on eagles so that we know how to care for them in a surgical situation. We're trying new treatment techniques all the time. We're publishing those findings. We started off in 1985 getting one bald eagle in. That bald eagle had been poisoned by the chemical carbofuran. We found out about it. As a result of that one eagle, it took us two decades of constant work to get that chemical banned, first in Virginia, 
then nationwide. And that particular bird when led to the ban of that chemical, which according to EPA was killing two million birds a year when used according to the label. One eagle opened that door because we were able to study the health of the one bird, identify a threat from all birds. So we're going to do the yo-yo thing here. <laughs> and then act on it. That's what makes the Wildlife Center different from your average rehabilitation center. Yeah, we want to fix the birds. Yeah, we want to take care of the broken animals and get them back into the wild. But the most important thing for us is finding out why that injury took place in the first place. Finding out what we can do to not just remove the injury, but remove the threat. And that's what we're about. And we work closely with our colleagues, such as those at the Center for Conservation Biology, our friends and colleagues here at Norfolk Botanical Garden, and most importantly, through our new family, our online family, our friends here today, the people who care about wildlife. Because only through humans will animals be saved. Conservation is a social science as much as it is a field science. Your engagement, your involvement, your support of the Wildlife Center, your support of the garden, your support of the Center for Conservation Biology, it matters. All three of our organizations are small enough where your contributions are meaningful to us. They really matter. But we're big enough, all three of us, to change the world. And with you, through you, with friends like Buddy, that's exactly what we're here to do. So let me put him away, and then you can clap. All right, hang on one quick second here. And he will be out later this afternoon. I'm going to do this the easy way. He doesn't know this way yet. <laughs> a little imperfect until he practices a little. Okay. <laughs>